Welcome to another episode where we take you on a literary journey through time. Today, we're diving deep into Hesba Stretton's timeless novel, The Traveling Post Office. A book that may not be widely known today, but one that holds a mirror to the complexities of human relationships, moral dilemmas, and the unique world of Victorian England. Prepare for a journey filled with intense emotions, unexpected twists, and characters that will stay with you long after the story ends. The Traveling Post Office takes place in an era where communication was evolving, yet personal connections remained fragile. The story centers around a small, but essential institution, the Traveling Post Office, that not only delivered letters but also transported the lives and stories of its characters across the rails of England. Let's embark on this detailed retelling and experience each part of the novel in its entirety. Our story begins in a quiet village, nestled deep within the rolling hills of rural England. The air is thick with the scent of freshly cut grass, and the gentle hum of the village life sets the tone for what seems like an ordinary day. The village is small, and its inhabitants lead simple lives, relying on letters as their primary means of communication with the outside world. For them, the arrival of the traveling post office is an event, a connection to distant relatives, lovers, and business associates. At the heart of this village is a man named John Massey. John is a diligent and kind-hearted postmaster, who has spent years overseeing the smooth running of the local post office. He's a man of routine and precision, and his life revolves around ensuring that letters reach their destination on time. The villagers respect John for his unwavering dedication to his job, but beneath this steady exterior, John carries a burden that weighs heavily on him, a personal loss that he seldom speaks about. His wife, Mary, passed away several years ago, leaving him to raise their daughter, Alice, alone. Alice Massey, a girl in her early twenties, is as gentle and kind as her father, though she possesses a youthful curiosity and longing for adventure that sets her apart. While she appreciates the quiet life of the village, Alice has always been fascinated by the world beyond a world she only knows through the letters that pass through her father's post office. Her curiosity is piqued by the stories of far-off cities, bustling with life, and by the people who inhabit them. But her deepest curiosity is reserved for the traveling post office itself, a marvel of Victorian engineering that symbolizes movement and change in a world otherwise static. The traveling post office arrives twice a week, bringing with it letters from distant places. It is more than just a train, it's a moving institution that operates like a small town on wheels, where letters are sorted and dispatched with an efficiency that fascinates Alice. She often watches from the platform as the train rolls in, its rhythmic clatter a constant reminder of the broader world she's yet to see. One day, as Alice watches the traveling post office pull into the station, she notices something unusual. A young man, dressed in the uniform of the postal service, steps off the train and approaches her father. There's a brief exchange between the two men, and then the young man turns and walks back to the train, his face clouded with emotion. John Massey, usually so composed, seems unsettled by the encounter, and Alice, sensing something is wrong, approaches her father. John tells Alice that the young man's name is Charles Ashford, and he's been assigned to the traveling post office as a clerk. However, what troubles John is not Charles's position, but the fact that he bears an uncanny resemblance to someone from John's past, a man named Henry Ashford, Charles's father, 
who had once been a close friend of John's. Henry and John had grown up together in the same village, but their friendship had ended abruptly, torn apart by a misunderstanding that neither man had ever resolved. John hadn't seen or heard from Henry in years, but now, seeing Charles, he is reminded of the unresolved conflict and the pain it had caused. Charles Ashford is unaware of the history between his father and John. He's a young man eager to prove himself in his new role, but he's also haunted by his own family issues. His father, Henry, had passed away a few months earlier, and Charles had never been able to fully understand the estrangement between his father and John Massey. All he knows is that his father had spoken of John with a mix of regret and anger, and Charles is determined to learn more about the man who had once been his father's closest friend. As the traveling post office departs, Alice watches Charles from a distance, intrigued by the young man's demeanor and his connection to her father's past. There is something about him that stirs a sense of curiosity within her, and she wonders what kind of life he leads, constantly moving from place to place aboard the traveling post office. And so, the seeds of our story are sown. The arrival of Charles Ashford brings with it a past that John Massey had long buried, but the story of the traveling post office is not just about letters and deliveries. It's a tale of old wounds, of new connections, and of the journeys, both literal and emotional, that each character embarks upon. As we move further into the story, the complex relationships between John, Charles, and Alice begin to unfold. The traveling post office continues to pass through the village, bringing letters and parcels from across the country. Each letter holds a story, a glimpse into the lives of others, and Alice, like many in the village, is fascinated by the messages that pass through her hands. However, she becomes particularly intrigued by one letter in particular, a letter addressed to her father, John Massey. The envelope is worn and faded, as if it had been sitting somewhere for a long time, waiting to be delivered. John opens the letter in private, his face growing pale as he reads its contents. The letter is from Henry Ashford, written shortly before his death. In it, Henry expresses his regret over the fallout between them and begs John to forgive him. He explains that the misunderstanding that had driven them apart was based on a lie, one that Henry had believed for years, but which he had come to realize was false. Henry asks for John's forgiveness, hoping that they might reconcile before it's too late. However, the letter had been delayed, and by the time it reached John, Henry had already passed away. John is deeply affected by the letter, and for days he is consumed by guilt and sorrow. He realizes that he had held on to his anger for too long, and now it's too late to make amends with his old friend. The only connection he has left to Henry is through Charles, and John is determined to reach out to the young man, to learn more about his life and perhaps find a way to heal the wounds of the past. Alice, meanwhile, becomes more and more intrigued by Charles. She begins writing letters to him, using the traveling post office as their means of communication. At first, their letters are formal and polite, but as time goes on, they become more personal, with Alice sharing details of her life in the village and Charles telling her about his experiences aboard the traveling post office. Through their letters, a bond begins to form, one that is based not only on their mutual curiosity about each other, but also on their shared sense of connection to the past. Charles, too, is grappling with his father's legacy. He had always known that there was something unresolved between his father and John Massey, 
but he had never known the details. Now, through his correspondence with Alice, he begins to piece together the story, learning about the friendship that his father and John had once shared, and the events that had driven them apart. As he learns more, Charles becomes determined to bridge the gap between their families, to find a way to reconcile the past and move forward. As the letters between Alice and Charles continue, the story takes an unexpected turn. What starts as a simple correspondence soon evolves into something deeper, as both characters begin to confront their pasts and the legacies left by their fathers. With each letter, Alice and Charles grow closer. Their words to one another begin to carry more weight, and it becomes clear that their bond is not just based on their curiosity about the past, but on a genuine affection for one another. Alice shares with Charles her love for the quiet life in the village, but also her growing desire to experience the world beyond it. Charles, in turn, tells Alice about life aboard the traveling post office, the constant movement, the sense of isolation, and the small moments of connection he finds through the letters he handles. As their correspondence continues, Alice begins to notice subtle hints in Charles's letters, suggesting that he is grappling with something more than just the death of his father. There are moments where Charles seems distant, almost melancholic, and Alice wonders if there is something he's not telling her. She doesn't press him for details, but the thought lingers in her mind, adding a layer of tension to their exchanges. Meanwhile, John Massey becomes increasingly determined to make amends for the past. The guilt he feels over his estrangement from Henry weighs heavily on him, and he knows that the only way to find peace is to reach out to Charles. But John is not a man who expresses his emotions easily. For years, he has buried his feelings, focusing instead on his duties as a postmaster and as a father. Now, with Henry's letter in hand, John feels a sense of urgency, a need to right the wrongs of the past before it's too late. One evening, as Alice prepares to write another letter to Charles, John approaches her with an envelope in hand. He tells Alice that he has written a letter to Charles, but he's unsure if he should send it. In the letter, John explains the history between him and Henry, the misunderstanding that tore them apart, and his regret over not reconciling before Henry's death. John hesitates, unsure if Charles would want to hear about such painful memories. Alice encourages her father to send the letter, believing that it might be the key to healing the rift between their families. John eventually sends the letter, and for days he anxiously awaits a response. When the traveling post office returns, John receives a letter from Charles, but instead of the response he was expecting, the letter is brief and cold. Charles thanks John for his letter, but he makes it clear that he is not ready to discuss the past. The rejection stings John deeply, and he begins to wonder if reconciliation is even possible. John's attempts to reach out to Charles are met with resistance, and for the first time, he feels the weight of his actions. But what John doesn't know is that Charles is not just struggling with the past, he is carrying a secret that threatens to unravel everything. Charles's reluctance to engage with John's letter is not just out of loyalty to his late father. Beneath the surface, Charles is grappling with a painful truth, one that he has kept hidden for years. Charles's secret is slowly revealed as the story progresses. It turns out that Henry Ashford, Charles's father, had not only been estranged from John Massey, but from his own family as well. Henry's life had been marked by a series of poor decisions, financial struggles, 
and a deep-seated bitterness that had driven a wedge between him and those closest to him. For years, Henry had harbored resentment toward John, believing that John had wronged him in some way, but the truth was far more complicated. Before his death, Henry had confided in Charles, revealing that much of the animosity he felt toward John was based on a lie. Henry had been manipulated by a third party, someone who had sought to exploit the friendship between the two men for personal gain. This revelation had shaken Charles to his core, leaving him with a deep sense of confusion and betrayal. On one hand, Charles wanted to believe that his father had been wronged, but on the other hand, he couldn't ignore the possibility that his father had been complicit in the destruction of their friendship. As Charles grapples with this inner turmoil, he finds himself withdrawing from both Alice and John. The letters he once eagerly awaited from Alice now sit unopened on his desk, and the thought of responding to John's letter fills him with dread. Charles feels trapped, unable to move forward, yet unwilling to confront the truth. Alice, sensing that something is wrong, continues to write to Charles, hoping that her words will reach him. She shares stories of her daily life in the village, her thoughts on the world beyond, and her growing affection for Charles. But as the weeks pass without a response, Alice begins to worry that she may never hear from him again. Meanwhile, John remains haunted by the letter he received from Henry. He rereads it late at night, wondering if there was more he could have done to mend their friendship before it was too late. The guilt gnaws at him, but he remains determined to make things right with Charles, even if it means confronting painful truths about the past. As the tension between the characters builds, the story reaches a turning point. A storm is brewing, both literally and figuratively, and the events that unfold will change their lives forever. One stormy evening, as the traveling post office makes its way through the countryside, disaster strikes. The train, battered by strong winds and torrential rain, derails, sending letters and parcels scattering across the tracks. Charles, who is aboard the train at the time, is thrown from his seat and injured in the crash. The chaos that follows is overwhelming, but Charles manages to escape the wreckage with his life. The news of the crash reaches the village the next day, and Alice is devastated to learn that Charles was on board. Desperate to know if he's safe, she rushes to the nearest town, where survivors of the crash are being treated. When she arrives, she finds Charles lying in a hospital bed, his face pale and bruised, but alive. The sight of Charles in such a vulnerable state brings a flood of emotions to the surface for both Alice and Charles. For the first time, they confront their feelings for one another, and Charles opens up to Alice about the secret he has been carrying, the truth about his father, Henry, and the role he played in the fallout between John and Henry. Alice listens in silence as Charles tells her everything, and as he speaks, she realizes that the only way for them to move forward is for Charles to confront John and share the truth with him. But Charles is hesitant unsure if John would be willing to listen after all that has happened. With Alice's encouragement, Charles agrees to meet with John, and the two men finally sit down to talk. The conversation is difficult, filled with painful memories and unresolved emotions, but as they speak, both men begin to realize that the past, while painful, doesn't have to define their future. They may never fully understand what drove them apart, but they can choose to forgive and move forward. As the story draws to a close, we see how the events that unfolded aboard the traveling post office have changed the lives of our characters forever. 
With the past behind them, John, Alice, and Charles begin to rebuild their lives. The traveling post office continues its journey through the countryside, but for Alice and Charles, it represents something more than just a means of delivering letters. It symbolizes the journey they have taken together, a journey of forgiveness, love, and hope for the future. The final scene of the story takes place at the village station, where Alice and Charles stand together, watching as the traveling post office departs. Their future is uncertain, but for the first time, they are filled with a sense of possibility, knowing that whatever challenges lie ahead, they will face them together. And so, the story of the traveling post office comes to an end, with a message of hope, reconciliation, and the power of forgiveness. Through the letters they exchanged, Alice, Charles, and John were able to confront their pasts, mend their relationships, and embark on a new journey together. Thank you for joining us on this emotional and heartfelt journey, and we hope that the story of the traveling post office has touched your heart as much as it has ours.